live in action. Hi, everybody. It is two o'clock Eastern, and thank you for joining or catching the replay. Um, we told you we'd be here, and gosh darn it, we got here because <laughs> we've had some more tech issues. Oh, I'm going to invite. I'm going to invite him in the stream here. Matt DeMeo is with me, and uh, I'm so excited to be chatting with the three-time author, but also Amazon bestseller and recent winner of YouTube's Silver Play Button Award. I think you're up to like 130,000 followers or something on YouTube. Matt, well, say welcome, and where are you joining us from today? Well. Thank you, first of all, Amanda, for inviting yeah. me. I'm so excited. This is my very first Facebook Live. And awesome. so this is wonderful. Um, I'm joining you all from beautiful Tampa, Florida. And by the way, you are right. Uh, as of this morning, my YouTube channel, Be Smarter Faster, just hit 129,000 subscribers. Nice. So it, That's it's great. growing at, at geometric progressions. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Well, I think something's happening. People are realizing this is a real thing. I think they're feeling maybe a lot of brain drain. They 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 feel overwhelmed. And just so so you know and for the viewers watching, I like to do these videos and um obviously love that Matt was a specialist in this because I'm finding Matt that even with clients, sometimes um, they feel not only the overwhelm of how much information comes at you, that's the one thing I'd love to chat with you about today, but also what my clients are feeling is they found that they're thinking a different way. Like not only are we trying to lessen what comes into their sphere to be only the important stuff, but how do you absorb something coming at you um, through online channels and, and video like this, plus, um, simple things like networking and remembering quick names and things like that, which you're, this is one of your specialties and really what's happening with our brains today. I mean, it's, it's a lot. So I'm looking forward to getting your insight on all of those. Um, yeah. Where would you say you, you, you stand on the whole information age? <laughs> well, first of all, we, um, that, that was a, a big, a big ask. <laughs> mm. So, um, yeah. so number one, we live right now, as you pointed out, in an age of information overload. And mm -hmm. if you can't keep up, you wind up getting left behind. You know, things are coming mm -hmm. at us like, like through a fire hose. So mm -hmm. it's a, a, a combination of two different things that I talk about frequently. Number one, is getting your priorities straight because not everything has a, an equal level of importance that is going to impact you. And it's very, very easy to get distracted with stuff that is really not relevant and you wind up clogging yourself up with that. Now, we'll come back to that in a moment. But the real core of, of the, the value that I, that I offer you and, and all of your viewers is the ability to use strategic learning. You know, school tells you what to learn, but they rarely teach you how to learn it. And, and let me back that up. Mm -hmm. You can think back to your days in the classroom, a teacher will be wagging their finger at you, saying, pay attention, mm -hmm. listen to me when I talk to you, remember this information for the test. Mm -hmm. And yet, almost nobody has ever taken a single class in how to pay attention. Mm -hmm. What are the mechanics? What, what do you do? Is there a way that you can get yourself to have better concentration? Um, listen to me. Well, I've been in sales most of my life. Mm -hmm. A lot of what I teach has a, a direct impact on the ability to be persuasive and to sell more mm -hmm. because it's all communication skills. Mm -hmm. And salespeople are always told, well, God gave you two ears and one mouth and you need to listen twice as much as you talk. Mm -hmm. Well, what the heck does that even mean? And did you ever take any formal classes mm -hmm. in what are the mechanics of being an excellent listener? So I actually put together a course that covers seven different steps. Okay. Uh, I call it x-ray hearing and, mm -hmm. and remembering stuff. And this is one of the things that I think that we're primarily going to talk about in our on our time together here today, is I talk about the three causes of forgettery. You know, everybody wants to talk about memory, but 
I address it from the from the flip side. Okay. What's the culprit? If you can identify clearly what your problem is, yeah. then you're more than halfway to solving it. So I talk about three causes of forgettery. Okay. And now I'm going to turn it back to you so yeah. you can kind of direct where we want to go with this. No, that's exactly it. I think that was a really good overview. And we will come back, like you said. Great point. It's a matter of understanding when we're getting this fire hose of information, what I'd love the group to understand. And just for everybody's knowledge, what the group is about and what I teach people how to do is um, be very precise in what you're consuming. So when you go from a pr busy professional over to an expert and a thought leader, you're going to be much more selective, first of all, of what you're ingesting. So it kind of goes in line with what you're saying and teaching, which is, first of all, prioritize the info, right? Because Absolutely. as right as professionals doing well, as thought leaders in demand, as, as experts in demand, you're going to have to learn not only how to say no to the old stuff, the old way you used to do business, the old gigs, the old messaging, but you're going to have to um, maybe expand a little, Matt, on what you mean by prioritize the information you're consuming because it's directly in line with what I teach as well. But um, in terms of how do you do that when, and I'll try to get the chat going too. I know people had questions. Um, I guess, do you have any insight on how to do that when you're getting information from so many places? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, because I experience it myself all of the time. Mm -hmm. And my students experience it. And, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. You know, they say that the best way to learn is to teach. Mm -hmm. And I am constantly being forced to practice what I preach to have a consistent message and to have a level of credibility with the people that I work with. And I myself have been the victim of information overload. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. recently, one of the things that I've begun doing is to help myself prioritize is I've gotten away from some of the digital stuff and gone back to straight old pen and paper. And mm -hmm. I use four by six cards, three by fives. I find are a little too, too small, but simple four by six file cards. Okay. And on each file card, I write down what are my main priorities? What are the, what are, what are my sources of revenue? Um, now in my particular case, uh, that was the, the place that I started. What are the different sources of revenue that I've got? What are the different business priorities that I've got? Okay. What's happening right now? What's happening uh, in the future? What am I looking to develop? Uh, because mm -hmm. I'm in the process of course creation right now. Oh, okay. So that's something that that is, is not currently a revenue generator, but mm -hmm. I expect it to be. Okay. And so, each priority, each task goes on one three by or one file card. Yeah. And then when you're able to look at it and sort them out, you can go, well, wait a minute. I've got a couple of things that I've written down here that really are, are such low priorities because they're producing such little uh, reward uh, in the way of any sort of return, whether it's an emotional return or a dopamine fix. Right. Or... A, a revenue return that I said, you know what? I need to put these on the side. And okay. just yesterday, or, uh, actually it was two days ago, mm -hmm. I wound up politely severing a business relationship that I had mm -hmm. with somebody because the, uh, it, it, the level of frustration, the, um, the learning curve and the level of frustration that I was dealing with in terms of being able to pursue that Right. was just not worth it. It's outweighing the value else. when the level, yeah. Well, that's, the scale I think, was way out of balance. Right. So I think Fortunately, what we're, we ended it on a good note, but I go. realized I went, you know what? And then there was somebody else from South America. There's a, a large company in South America that's dealing with, uh, I don't know, they got a dozen different uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And they had an offer on the table to me. And I, re and I really took about a week to make a decision mm -hmm. whether or not I was going to pursue that. And after being able to look at things on paper and, and uh, being able to organize it mechanically rather right. than online, right. being able to look at it, I was able to say, you know what, this really has a lot of potential. And I wound up deciding to do business with them. Okay. So what you're speaking to is just, is the priority of information or really business priorities. 
And there's many different ways to do that with either four by six cards. I teach something called the leader, the thought leader system, which is how to prioritize your day, which cuts out the stuff that you don't need to focus on and only focus on the stuff. In your case, you're saying the stuff that brings you revenue. And I'm saying the stuff that is in your sphere of expertise. That's what people come to you for. That's what they'll pay you more for. Um, so as far as, um, is there a different way that our brain is handling what we read online versus in a book? I know one of your books behind you is called Successful Online Learning. Um, <laughs> we learn differently. Yeah. Oh, it's, on, it's on this side. <laughs> that's your first, no, not your first book. That's your third book? Yeah, or it's, um, first? it's, um, straight, it's uh, really designed for college and high school students. It's called Straight A Strategies for Successful Online Learning. And um, I got inspired to do that because um, I'm a much older dad. I, I turned 68 on my last birthday, but my only child just recently turned 20 and she is a college sophomore. Now in March, she came back home from Florida State University for what was supposed to be a two week spring break and has been home ever since because all of her classes reverted to being online. Okay. And I was watching her deal with the with the with the frustration mm -hmm. and all of the newness of this uh, you know online world so i was really motivated mm -hmm. to uh to create some materials for that mm -hmm. however um i had gotten i had uh, previously published a short video on youtube about it and the testimonials that i got back were so overwhelming that i realized i needed to expand it and turn it into a book so okay. for, for but, professionals as well, not just students. Okay. Correct. I've had so many people that have used a book that was originally designed for students right. to be able to help them get organized for work from home. Because okay. whether, you're, whether your work is getting good grades and taking classes or whether your work is a career choice, the... Um, the fundamentals that I get into are really the same. I don't really go into, you know, reading books and textbooks and stuff like that as much as the book is divided into two sections. And the first really talks about getting your space set up and doing the housekeeping mm -hmm. to make your online work experience mimic your, the, the 3d real world experience. Okay. And so for students or for business people, you know, I talk about the idea of, you know, get up, uh, get shaved, get dressed, right. do your hair, uh, um, do the same things, ha have a clear schedule, do the same things at home that you would normally do if you had a report to an office or a classroom. Is that tricking our brains into waking up? <laughs> It, it, it does all sorts of things. First of all, it becomes a sense of familiarity. You've got structure again. All of a sudden, people need structure. That's why we have set hours at work. That's why classes are set up at particular times. When you have no accountability, then you do, then, then everything, you know, just goes, flies out the window. Yeah. Accountability is really important. And unless you hold yourself accountable, then you let yourself off the hook way too easily. So the whole first section of the book is really geared around the mechanics of setting up your space and being able to mimic the real world experience while you are in a digital world. The second right. part deals with how you absorb and how you interact with other students, coworkers, and how you deal with the difference between things like how do you deal with a recorded presentation differently than something that's live, like you and I are doing now? Are there different mechanics to being able to absorb it? Is that um, that's a good example? Like, should we be approaching our online courses differently than like going to a network event? And aside from setting up your space for success, is there a certain one of the questions was there a certain time each day that consuming information might be more beneficial? Absolutely. So for pre-recorded stuff, I strongly recommend getting it over and done with as early in the day as possible. And, I, and for, for two reasons. Number one, after you've had a good night's sleep and you're uh, uh, refreshed, 
you have a lot less distractions on your mind. Mm -hmm. As the day wears on, you have more and more things that accumulate in your head, all of the different mm -hmm. stuff going on yep. that really winds up giving you kind of a log jam. Right. And so for pre-recorded stuff that you can view at any time, I recommend doing it as early in the day while you're as fresh as possible when you have as few distractions as you're going to have. Because by late in the day, too many other events have happened right. that are now occupying uh, brain power. Oh, and power and space, I guess. That's not Correct. what really happens, but that's how we're picturing it. Is there a certain amount of space our brains have to digest new information? Like, how would you just explain that? Is, do we have like a space limitation for consuming new information? You know, it. it we probably are limitless. Mm -hmm. But the trick is how much you can deal with at any one time. Mm. So there's a, there's a, a, a technique out there called the Pomodoro technique. Mm -hmm. um, I use what's uh, what many of you are familiar with spaced repetition. Um, okay. I do what, by the way, you may wonder why do high school and college lectures, why do classes last less than an hour? Typically, they are 42 minutes long. Okay. Well, that is not a random number. Yeah. That's not a random idea. Mm -hmm. So you're able to concentrate and focus mm -hmm. in bursts. Yep. So I recommend that for whether you're studying or for whether you're preparing for, for stuff at work or you've got to absorb new information, that you do it in chunks. Like 40 minutes? Half chunks? an hour to 40 minutes. Good. Okay. Take a 10, 15 minute break. And by the way, during the break, you know what? I, I recommend something that's really surprising to a lot of people. Yeah. Do a little bit of exercise. Yeah. Stand up, uh, right? Uh, Get the blood flowing. Cut. Absolutely. Exercise yeah. really has a tremendously beneficial effect mm -hmm. on your ability to absorb new information. So when like you I say back in my old neighborhood of New Jersey, go figure. Yeah, that's right. Who would have known? I mean, these are things that we know. I guess. Yeah, right. Like we've heard them over and over, but it's it's good. It's a good reminder. And also what you just said is that it's also a reason why, you know, when we're building out courses and things, that 40 minute mark is really um, I've been taught to keep your. Um, that's why it's that it's a big chunk and it's at the far end of the chunk that people are able to focus. So we're able, it sounds like we're able to focus longer on those bigger things we're prepared to digest, but it also sounds like our attention span is getting a lot shorter on those little day-to-day -day things. Like I think we're down to like three seconds for the younger <laughs> generation now. It went from seven, then it's three. So well, yeah, um, when, when we're hit with a, you know, all this new stimuli, you know, you're right. Everything is vying for your attention. But you yeah. said something that I want to come back to for just a moment. And that is, and you'll notice that this is true. People remember beginnings and endings far better than they remember the stuff that's in the middle. Think right. about movies. Uh, think about TV shows. Um, you remember, uh, think about a, a rock concert. Okay. You think you remember things at the beginning because that's what will grab your attention. And you remember things that are at the end because now they're coming up to the finale and the recap or whatever it is. Beginnings and endings yeah. are what you remember the best. Mm -hmm. So the more beginnings and endings you can give yourself, the better off you are. For example, studying in three 20 minute bursts is far better because now you've got three sets of beginnings and endings than studying continuously through for 60 minutes. Okay. Because then you only have one beginning and ending. Oh, I see. You mean you retain almost, if you do it in chunks, you kind of, you tend to retain what you're absorbing in the beginning and retain what you're absorbing at the end, you're saying, and then break. Correct. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, well, that's interesting. Instead of all the way through, you might remember some of the beginning and then you really forget everything in between and only focus on the end. That's interesting. Yep. I like that. I like that because we're in the age guys of gosh, online courses and webinars. We're getting through all these things that are taking our time, not only our screen time visually, but, but I know you guys are, 
even in conferences, you know, or if you're putting together conferences, this is, this is great. If those of you that are pulling together conferences, pulling together courses, um, and then those of you that have the benefit of having your core key messages locked in, that to me, um, you know, for any of my current clients listening is, is the key messages we create, make sure that those powerful statements, guess what, are plopped in, you know, beginning of the 20 minute chunk, end of the 20 minute chunk. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's neat. So there's ways you can maximize what you do. Cause I'll be honest, I'll reiterate, I'm all about less with more impact, right? And if what you're, you're saying goes with what I'm saying is if you have the messages and the thing locked in, then you know how to deliver them in the right way that way that people are paying attention and can listen to them. That's why I saw the symbiotic nature of what we both do. Right. Um, That's those yeah. are good observations. Here, yeah. Here's here's something else because um, one of the things that I do not ever hear other people talk about is what is it that gets you to retain the information far better than the way most people normally go about stuff. Okay. Most people think that learning happens when you're putting information into your head. And that is just not the case at all. Yeah. It learning happens when you're getting the information out of your head. And so the more times you can take the information and get it out of you, the better it's going to stay in you. Oh, so let me show you. So, let me show, so it's a paradox. <laughs> I love so, that. So let me, let me, let me explain what this means. Taking notes here. Hope you guys are taking notes. <laughs> And by the way, taking notes is a great oh. example. <laughs> now watch, taking notes by handwriting mm. is far superior, far superior than typing them up. And here's, it's it's a technique called multi-sensory perception. You, you've heard of ESP, extrasensory perception. Yep. Well, this is MSP, multi-sensory perception. And what that is, is the more senses you can use, Mm -hmm. when you're absorbing information or when you're learning information, the mm -hmm. better you'll retain it okay. because the more synapses are, are created, the more okay. connections are created. Okay. So the more channels you can deal with. Uh, so as opposed to watching a video, you're really only engaging the sense of sight, taking notes. Look at what happens when you take notes. So first of all, the information goes in through your eye Mm -hmm. And then it goes out through your hand, mm -hmm. out through your hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. The information goes through you mm -hmm. and comes out your hand and then mm -hmm. it goes back in through your eye again. Okay. Right. So now what you've got is you've got a flow of information. It comes in, mm -hmm. you're, you're listening, you're hearing the information and now you are writing it down and now it's going back out of you. Now, mm -hmm. if you want to improve that, Go and explain what you just watched or go and explain what you've just learned to somebody else. Mm -hmm. The best way to learn is to teach. Mm -hmm. So the more you can get the information out of you and have a conversation with somebody about what you just absorbed. Yeah. Now what you'll discover is you'll see what are the parts that you really got down and what are the weak areas that you might need some work on. And you may be surprised some things that you thought you got yeah. you really didn't get. As soon as somebody asks you a question, you're going, what in the world? Yeah. I, thought I knew that. <laughs> and I find it's, an, maybe you'll say it's another skill to be fluid in not only head to hand and out, um, but head to mouth and out. Cause I'm what, right. And maybe you could t touch on that because through what we do with people uh, is a lot of the time, those exercises to get it out include actually having the conversation or recording the thing to, I'm assuming those synapses have to be fired as well to be like, roll off the tongue. This is natural. This feels good. So is that the same thing happening? Uh, you got it. Yeah. Bing. Yeah. And because now when you are um, elucidating, when you are now reciting it, it. back information that you learned, yeah. you're now taking it out of you. So it go, it's mm -hmm. going in your ears and eyes. It's coming out your mouth, but now yeah. it's going back in your ears again. Okay. So you've yep. got this, right. this flow it's of like, information. Like a loop. But, in, 
that's a, yeah. it's a flow. It's the flow. And that that is where the learning takes place. Okay, good. That's why we take exams. That's why we take tests. Right, right. Because it's not putting the information in. It's right. getting the information out. And the more you can figure out ways to get the mm -hmm. information to come out of you, the better and the faster you'll learn it. Very Sometimes cool. the slow way is the fast way. Yeah. The turtle won the race. <laughs> That's very true too. Um, so just to kind of cover what we, where we've been going with this, which is kind of cool. Number one, like as anything, just get, it's about getting your priorities straight first and knowing where to focus. And I think that what I love about that is that's exactly what um, I teach people how to do is, gosh, it's, you know, the feedback is it's so nice just to focus on my area, my expertise, and I can actually build on that foundation and I don't have to be the expert in everything just to kind of put it in context is is the relief that comes with that the freedom so then once they're like awesome then the next stage what happens is they're like I love this I need I want more because I want to learn more be a better you know absorb more get more research um you know stack on my knowledge so then they find then then what very ha quickly happens after is that Oh, there's so much I want to read and I want to get to this journal article and I want to get to this blog and I have to follow this person. So I'm not sure if you have any answers about um, when it comes to the, it sounds like you're saying it doesn't matter where we're getting our knowledge, just a matter of prioritizing it. It's not like I'm going to learn more by listening to a podcast versus reading a book. I don't think that's what you're saying. Um, is there a medium that works better for learning? It doesn't. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, there's a, all of these theories about what type of a learner are you, you know, and some people talk about, well, I'm a visual learner and I'm an auditory and I'm a, well, I'm, I'm sure that that's all true, mm. but it's, I think that for most people, it's going to be such a combination of those things that, mm. but you will notice that you do have preferences about things. There are mm. some things that you may learn better by mm. purely listening to it right compared to reading about it and that is the responsible for the popularity of books on tape or audio audible books, yeah audible. podcasts but then most people <laughs> are doing that in driving or whatever whereas you're saying but if you need to learn from these sources let's complete that loop let's get it out of us to to the understanding, right? Communicate it, whatever. And then the, the triple threat, which is getting it back in either through ears or eyes. Correct. I, think. I like to break things down like that. <laughs> Perfect. And, and see, and that's why right. you break it down into little chunks, you know, uh, like the old expression by the, by the inch, it's a cinch, but by the yard, it is hard. <laughs> yeah. Right. All these things are ring so true. Um, this is awesome. Uh, they, and gosh, we've been half an hour. went so fast. Where do you think is the best? Oh, really quickly. Uh, just the memory thing. I wanted the name. I, I'm not asking for like, you know, all your secrets. They, they will get the right. remembering people's names book from you. And I just want to mention quickly, youtube.com forward slash be smarter, faster. Very easy to remember, be, and I'm going to have the link uh, below the comments. And that is a lot of great little clips. Actually, I've, I've watched a few of things you do, Matt, with uh, on a whiteboard. Um, but what I love just to summarize about today is it's helping. It was helpful for people who have to not only go out and create courses, creating events, right? When you're stepping into this new role um, as, as thought leader and then at the same time, adding to your smarts, maybe you're going and getting an extra degree. Um, you know, there's little things that you can do to maximize because who has time to not learn like, or, or rather who has time to waste is really it. So learning the smarter way, um, a digesting things faster, making sure it sticks. I think this is great. It's a great start. And, um, if there was one of the books you would recommend, um, which one would it be of my books? The, yeah, the, to start. The book that'll give you the most value is called How yep. to Remember People's Names. Okay. Out of all of the skills, out of all of the interpersonal skills that you can possibly have, yep. knowing how to remember people's names is something that almost everybody says that they feel that they're really bad at. 
And yet okay. there's no skill that gives you a better payoff than being able to remember people's names. So I'm going to buy that book right now for the first person to um, type in Matt DeMeo's YouTube channel in the comments. So I'm going to purchase that book for you, remembering people's names, Matt DeMeo. It'll be yours. It's a gift from me for watching. And um, I'm going to look again, type the link to Matt's YouTube channel forward slash be smarter faster and you get a free book from me. How's that sound? Everyone wins. Everybody wins on these things. Yay! <laughs> I think it's great. Of course, I've, I'm buying one for myself because I bought your, um, I already bought the successful online learning one. So that was oh, fun. Yeah, that was great. And I uh, I think it was, no, nope, I read it on my phone. It was through Kindle. So I, yeah, I had to scroll. <laughs> but I had to I, actually I have, read I have, I have three books on Kindle. Uh, right now, uh, Straight A Strategies, the successful online learning is available as a print on demand. The names book will be back available as print on demand any day now, but right now it's Kindle only, which okay. is great because it's cheap. <laughs> and yeah, then I've okay. got a book called Forgetful No More, which if you've ever put down your keys, your wallet, your eyeglasses, and later on had to do mm. play treasure hunt, you park your car in a lot and you come out and you don't remember where you parked it. Yes, you know, right. A conversation with somebody and you got the answer on the tip of your tongue. You can't get it to come to you. So okay. I, I offer practical solutions to those common everyday memory problems. I'm sure people can think of a few uh, stocking stuffers they can put that one into <laughs> this Christmas. Um, thank you so much, Matt. This was a lot of fun as I knew it would be. And um, just for your time and your energy in this group. Thank you. So I had a great time, Amanda. Thank you so much for inviting me. Glad it worked out. Amazing. Oh, I think someone just put in a uh, your channel. So I'm going to go look and see who that is. And uh, I, I owe them a free book. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Bye for in now. Florida. Enjoy the weather while we get snow up here. And um, <laughs> we'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.